Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. It's the show so low it has no budget. It's been a minute, man. I have been seriously sick. For people wondering why we were off last week, it is because after two years fully in the pandemic, I have finally caught COVID 19. And last week, I could not do any of our regular scheduled shows. So I missed literally some big news, which we're going to kind of talk about in here in the news segments, but I don't know, man. Maybe it's good I missed it because I don't, I don't, it's been talked to death at that point. But this is the Predator episode. It was supposed to come out before Prey. Now it's after Prey. That's just because I was sick. (laughs) It happens, you know? Not everything's going to work out the way you want to in life. Get off your ass and start doing more content. And we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, I'm excited. We got some inter- th- This is going to be an interesting month. We got a couple of interesting topics we'll be talking about this month. Because it- it's like blockbuster season, but it doesn't feel like blockbuster season, if that makes sense. You know, there's no like big August releases. Just bullet train, I guess. And even so, it's just bullet train. So not that big. We do have a bit of news to talk about. It's a couple weeks old now. We got the big Warner Brothers stuff, which we'll get to. First off, a couple of trailers that are interesting to me. The first one being the blonde trailer with Anna Diarmas playing Marilyn Monroe, Norma Jean Baker. It is, um, yeah, I, I've been, I'm going to do a big video talking about Marilyn and I, I just think her iconography in pop culture. I, I think we'll do two separate videos actually talking about Marilyn. It's complicated to me. I think this is a an important woman to talk about, how we fucked her up. But I also think we're not going to do an accurate portrayal. Like, there's already buzz going about that the book this story is based on shines a light on Marilyn in a certain way that might not be the most accurate. I'm just interested in how this is going to look. I, I will always love a good Hollywood jerk-off sesh where it's just a bunch of Hollywood people talking about how good Hollywood is. And there's just like, there's a level of self-awareness to maybe making a Marilyn story that shows her being messed up by Hollywood. But there's also a level where there is no self-awareness and the people behind this probably don't understand the tragedy of this woman. But I guess we'll see what happens. Anna looks great. The story is compelling enough where I think we could do something fun, but I've also just been saying, like, do we need to monetize this woman's life even more than we already have? She's already an icon in history. Do we have to keep turning this story into a profit? But I guess we'll see. It could be special. I just don't know. I just don't know if we'd still need to go down this well and if we should. It doesn't feel like we need to, but I guess we're gonna. I guess we're gonna. So another trailer that dropped for a big television show that honestly surprised me. The first official Andor trailer is here, and I think it looks great. This is the thing I'm going to make very apparent and something I've kind of been talking about recently with, with more Star Wars shows. When you get out of the volume technology and you, you like actually use on-set locations and stuff, you really just see how poorly the volume can be utilized when it's in the wrong hands because this looks like the best show they've made since the mandalorian and i i've been in support of all of the shows they've made a lot of them have been weird and interesting i wouldn't say any of them are absolute shit they've just been mixed bags you know but andor has this really interesting feel that it's just like not the rise of like the rebellion but just seeing a society being so burnt out by its political government to the point where change has to be made, it's very apparent of today's society. And I know there's like the comments that like, the Andor show is all about like the Trump administration. I'm like, yeah, but fucking should be because Star Wars has literal war in the title, you dipshits. It's a political story. They're called Stormtroopers off the Nazis, bud. Like this is a... This is a political series, and you're de- delving with a character who is the espionage agent who starts off working for a certain side and defects. And you're like, that is a story of importance. It looks great. Skarsgård's important. Stellan looks like he's going to be a big role. I saw some comments 
maybe hinting that he's going to be like a swashbuckling kind of character where he like pl- poses as like a playboy allying himself with the empire in the day but at night he's wearing a cape and he's jumping down and taking on the people he swears he's working for oh it looks cool this is going to be sick this might be the star wars show i do weekly reviews for we'll have to wait and see but it's september 21st so they pushed it out of august I think because they realized we shouldn't drop a Marvel and a Star Wars at the same time and put them on different days. So a three-episode premiere, September 21st, and because of that, we moved She-Hulk over to Thursdays because these streaming services are starting to realize we're just scheduling weekly television now, as it should be. You know, don't drop it all at once. Do this shit. It works pretty good. So Andor looks sick, and I guess kind of on a sad note, we can talk about the final installment of The Flash. No, Ezra Miller's movie is still coming out, all is good in Flashland, but Grant Gustin's season 9 of CW's The Flash will be the final season with a 13-episode season. Let's all just give a slow round of applause for Grant Gustin continuing to be one of the nicest guys in Hollywood after being stuck in this contract for so long. I don't imagine he's going to be the next big star after this, but I think he'll get some consistent work. He's at least earned that. I am super curious about this now. How is this final season going to go? Are we going to tie up any loose ends? Are we going to do anything of note, anything of celebration? Very interesting. Congrats to you, Grant. You've made it to the end. You have the longest show You are the storied guy in here. Is this going to be the finale of the CW stuff? Who's to say? Congrats, man. It's over. It's all over. The CW is over, party. Riverdale's coming to an end, too. The Flash is coming to an end. They canceled Gotham Knights already. We are entering a new era of wonder. So this news, it's kind of been talked to death already, but I do kind of just need to talk about the Batgirl situation. I don't think I'm going to get too in-depth on it here. I think maybe I'll save a little bit of my thoughts for the live show. But I just want to say that I have very little faith in David Zaslav's leadership. It sounds like he is an old-school man who thinks fan fandom content is aimed towards a male, like, viewed... I, it's fucking stupid what he thinks. And that women only like 90 Day Fiance and, you know drivers dine-ins and whatever the fuck it's bullshit because considering some of the best content on hbo max is female driven stories and it upsets me that we're going to be losing a lot of that but the cancellation of batgirl is i think one of the telltale signs much like the wonder twins much like scoob haunted holiday it's a telltale sign that now these networks realize if something's underperforming we can just chuck it in the bin and we don't care about creatives anymore. And I, I get, I get that this is going to upset a lot of people. I'm just going to be the. I'm just going to say it. Expect this to happen a lot more regularly. It's a shame that everybody involved in Batgirl isn't going to see the success of their film. That will always drive me crazy. And it's probably going to be one of those like what if things throughout Hollywood history. What if we got to see this Batgirl film with Michael Keaton and Brendan Fraser? It sucks. It's going to be the last time this happens, and we're going to see this affect the world on a larger scale. I think Warner Brothers is going to be making some weird choices soon. It's very interesting. I am just impressed that so many of these mega corporations can buy other mega corporations, and then we don't say anything about it. It seems very weird to me, but... I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say this: the content aimed towards women on HBO Max, like the flight attendant and the sex lives of college girls and Minx, are fucking great. And every person I know who watches 90 Day Fiance is a dude over 40. So it sucks. But Leslie Grace deserves better. I'm hoping fucking Feige swoops in and says, "Yeah, we're gonna cast you." As a character, we'll get the guys that directed your movie to come in and direct it. There you go. You're our new Spider-Girl or something. Very cool. It sucks, but yeah, as love, man, you so far have not proven your leadership is that great. I understand like the, the penny pushing nature of you, but you can't say your plan is to get a Kevin Feige type 
and do things that way without actually having a Kevin Feige because he sent out an email to the directors to thank them for their work. They are probably going to be picked up for a huge new project at Marvel because you're a piece of shit. All I want to say on that, we'll move on to our next topic, which is very exciting to me. I don't get a chance to talk about the Ninja Turtles a lot on this channel, but I feel like next year we're going to have a big boom of turtle content. So we finally got our title confirmation for the next Ninja Turtle film, which will be from the date the the Mitchell versus the Machines director. I think his name is David Green. It is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, a very classic-y sounding name. So pumped for this. It's going to be coming out this month next year. God, that's cool. So just expect a slew of more content coming to my channel and presumably other big channels that you follow about turtles. I, I'm already planning like doing a huge movie tales talking about every single turtle movie. I cannot wait to jump more into the turtle world. It's going to be fun. We'll have to see what happens with that. But cool, man. We're getting it. We're getting some good stuff. And... I thought that was going to be my last topic of the day, but actually something slided into my DMs a little bit later as we're recording this. So I guess some people were talking to Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise about like, what are you guys doing next? Like, you're doing a lot of great shit. Maverick was good for Tom. He's got the Dead Reckonings coming out. But what's next for Tom Cruise after that? Well, I guess he's got four new projects under development that we're going to go through the list of what they're supposedly an untitled film shot in space directed by Doug Lyman. We're going to shoot Tom Cruise into space. That's just fucking awesome. I'll watch him do anything now. It's amazing that he's 60 and still like the Hollywood guy. That's impressive. He's also got a new action thriller franchise. Now, they say new action thriller franchise, which means we're probably going to finish up Dead Reckoning and Mission Impossible's over. I wonder what they mean. Is it an existing franchise that he's rebooting or are we completely starting over with a new franchise with him? Is that still possible? A project fo focused on Les Grossman, who is his character from Tropic Thunder. That's weird. That is such a specific role for him. I am impressed he'd want to go back to it. I wonder what that's going to look like. But this is the one that surprised me the most because... Uh, it feels like this is not where he'd go. A song and dance style musical. Is Tom Cruise pulling a fucking Spielberg and he's just like, I've done everything I can of my career. Why don't I just remake West Side Story and then a Frank Bullet movie? Is that where Cruise is heading? Where he's like, yeah, I brought back a lot of dead franchises. I've made a lot of money. I had my highest grossing film ever, which was the most important film to me. I'm just going to pretend I'm Gene Kelly now. Like, is that what he's doing? It's... Oh, I fucking hope so. I fucking hope so. I love that. I love that. That is awesome. I'll watch Cruz do anything now. He has proven to me he's a guy to keep an eye on. And, and it's like a million years into his career already. That's amazing. My goodness. So, more McQuarrie and Cruz coming our way very soon. Hell Yeah. Hell yeah. So that's all the news we got when we come back from this break. Let's talk about Franchise v. Predator. Okay, look, this was just something I, I wanted to do. I don't know why, because the Predator is just one of those franchises and one of those like characters. You just stick them anywhere and you get something cool, you know, like, like a AVP is fucking dumb. But it's a cool idea because those characters feel like they'd exist in a world together. An insanely creepy, monstrous creature that crawls around and spits acid is the perfect enemy of the galaxy's deadliest hunter. It makes sense to me. But why stop there, you know? Let's just put the Predator in everything, and that's what this video is. I have a list of franchises I'm going to stick the Predator in, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. You know, this isn't like, well, it's owned by 20th Century, so it has to be a 20th Century property. No, this is simply the idea that we're putting the Predator anywhere I want to put the Predator and seeing how the Predator fucks up that movie. So let's start with the obvious. Robocop, it amazes me, 
in a world where everything else is being touched and tampered with that we haven't tried to do the RoboCop again. I know we did it back in like 2014 with that really weird Joel Kinnanen movie that nobody watched or enjoyed. But just imagine like the classic looking RoboCop just put into like the world of the Predator. You could do it either way or the RoboCop's like, okay, I'm in a small town. There is a monster hunting random people here. They're sending me in to fight it. And you get a RoboCop and a Predator fighting. Or it's just the Predator's like, well, this is an advanced form of human. I'm going to have to kick its ass. I don't care what happens now. I'm fighting this machine man. Either way, those are two franchises that kind of exist in the same bubble that deserve the chance to touch each other and just play in each other's sandbox, you know? My goodness, would that be sick? Like, why not? Why not try to do it? And and there's comic books for all this shit, you know? Like, the other one on my list here, kind of in the same vein of RoboCop, is just Terminator. There's been RoboCop versus Terminator comics before, but, like... They're cool franchises, and they have potential. Just imagine, like, sticking a Predator in, like, the future world where Skynet took over, and it's just a Predator fighting a slew of just robots. Like, maybe it teams up with the humans to take on this threat, and it's just, like, the Predators in, like, the military and the human resistance taking down all these other machines. My goodness, wouldn't that be sick? Could you imagine seeing, like, like this? Think how cool it is. Like, and... I'm recording this after I did my Prey review, so I'm going to talk about Prey a little bit here right now. It's a great fucking movie, and it's just like, I think Prey shows you that maybe we should put these stories, like these kind of characters and these type of villains in more period pieces, and I'm going to kind of talk about that a little bit when I get into another pitch I have where I'm just like, yeah, maybe if we put the Predator in this type of time period, it'd be cool. Or, you know, have some Xenomorphs show up in the Old West. Have, like, you know, the Terminators go back to feudal Japan or something. And, oh my god, the Terminators in feudal Japan? Are you kidding me? And they could turn their body into swords? Oh my god, that'd be sick. Okay, and kind of sticking in the same vein as Terminator and RoboCop, I put Judge Dredd. Like, a dread movie where the villain is a predator? Sign me the fuck up. That'd be sick. I think it's just that I want more Robocop and Terminator and Dread stuff that is good. And after seeing Prey, I'm like, man, these are good. We need to do more of these kind of films. And if the Predator's how we do it, hell yeah, just shove them in there. But here is the first few that I'm like, I really think these would be fun to see. First off, Planet of the Apes. I am I am still waiting for the Planet of the Apes franchise to find its larger footing again, to become the next big franchise because it has the potential. And son of a gun, we have the technology. So I'm just waiting for the people at 20th Century to be like, oh no, yeah, we're going to do a Planet of the Apes thing. It's going to be a Hulu original, 10 episodes. Here you go. But here's the thing. Planet of the Apes is owned by 20th Century. It's also Predator that's owned by 20th Century. There is possibility of them crossing over because they're owned by the same studio. But how cool do you think it would be? You could go to any of the time periods for Apes, the classic Heston era or the new Reeves era. I personally would like to see both of them. Like just a classic Predator going to that time period. And it's like, wait, this was supposed to be humans. Why are the humans the prey all of a sudden what are these new creatures that are like the dominant species oh my god what are these and just like you see the gorilla soldiers having to like fight one predator and they're just like look at this insane creature they try to lock it up and it just it's like imagine the plot of the first planet of the apes film from 68 but it's a predator instead of heston like how would that go differently where like they crash land they have no technology just a predator is fighting its way through some apes that would be pretty sick. Or you go to the Reeves era, where it's a little more like dominant and crazy. It's kind of it's got more of like a prey vibe, I guess, with kind of like the the buildings of a foundation for like a tribe and a family and a clan in a sense. And you just see like these primitive versions of these apes working together to fight this one creature that is threatening to destroy their society. I just think it'd be cool. I'm just, I just want more ape stuff, you know, like that. It, that's one of my favorite franchises. 
and I just want to see where people can take it, I think that'd be really cool. Just throw an ape in there and throw Predator in there and see where we end up and how things go. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun and crazy and cool and interesting? I don't know. That's just me. Here's another one I really like. And, and again, there's no possibility but about this happening because the creator of this franchise will never let its baby go to waste. But could you imagine we're in the plains, the desert dunes of Australia, if you will. And all of a sudden, as we're going down the Fury Road, a predator just jumps into frame, slashes out a tire and takes control of a machine and starts going after Maybe, maybe this is, it's fucking Mad Max, Mad, the Mad Max world, but a predator is just forced to fight its way to get its stuff back. Let's say a predator ship crashes down in the Mad Max world. Its technology is stolen and stripped. He becomes like enslaved. And then Max and a predator have to team up to fight their way through the hordes of the insanity that is the Fury Road and everybody driving down. Just imagine a big fucking machine that a predator is steering its way through taking down everybody in its path being this crazy creepy figure my goodness wouldn't that be sick mad max is another franchise that i just adore i i admire it so much because it's literally just george miller doing the next big thing like i i couldn't do it right the first time so i did road warrior and then i was like well thunderdome's is kind of like a sellout movie but then fury roads just road warrior on crack and it's just so good imagine that energy but you're just putting it into something like that big and bold oh my goodness because like a predator almost works in that world like the people in the mad max universe are kind of dressed as predators as it is so just imagine shoving them in there oh that'd be i would i would love it i would adore it now this next one I have to put it in here because it's just my favorite character of all time, and I want to do more of this character, and I think there's a great contrast you can play with when you put these two stories together because they're just so drastically different. I'm talking, of course, of Barbarella, Queen of the Galaxy, a character whose whole method is using love as a weapon to defeat her foe. How would that woman fare against a creature like the Predator? Let, let's say this is the plot. Barbarella has to find a way to help these stranded people on the Predator planet. And along with, well, let's just say a Pygar person of some sort, she has to use her power in order to save the people on that planet that need protection. It is pretty fun. Again, Barbarella is that character where it's like, yeah, she kind of fits perfectly into that classic retro sci-fi feel. And the Predator is just like this big, scary monster that maybe she could find the softness within them to make it something special, to make it something original and cool and just bring joy to that life. Who's to say? But it could just be like a different approach to that story where like... Everyone who meets the Predator is just like, okay, this is a creature we have to fight. We have to take it down. We have to attack it. What if Barrel's like, no, I, I'm not here to fight you. I just want to know why you think we should fight. Where she's just trying to talk down the situation and use her words as opposed to the violence that could come from it. Hey, that could be kind of fun. And in that essence, too, I also put Star Trek on here. And I, I did they cross over? I know Star Trek has crossed over with other things like Green Lantern and Planet of the Apes, maybe. Have they crossed over with Predator? It could just be a fun Gorn-ish situation where they're being hunted by the ship. They don't know what it is. A couple of Predators board the Enterprise or whatever ship you want to use, and they have to deal their way out of it. It seems plausible. It wouldn't, like, the Predator, like, character, like that species... It doesn't feel too drastic that it couldn't exist in the world of Star Trek. It is a little over the top, but there is something about it that could naturalistically fit in there. I'm not saying it should, I'm just saying it wouldn't be the worst thing that happened there. There is the possibility of it fitting there. And, and I don't know, this one, I just kind of put it in here because I was like, yeah, it's an alien planet. They're interesting characters. Avatar, would you guys want to see the Na'vi fight? A Predator? I think there could there's something to do there. Maybe they're too similar in like the sense of their protection ideas, but 
I don't know, like that society would just be weird. And of course, there's the obvious ones, the Ninja Turtles, the G.I. Joe, the Transformers. Those are obvious, but I wanted to go a little less obvious for my next picks. Here they are. These are fucked, okay? I just want to point it out right now. Clash of the Titans. Give me the story of like Perseus or Heracles or some one of those classic Greek gods in that pantheon replace them with a predator and now we are seeing the 12 trials of the predator as they are fighting all of the biggest titans and creatures that mythology has to offer imagine a predator having to fight like a cyclops or the titans or medusa or something and just seeing like how that would like that is cool like i I just want more big monsters fighting my predator like if we're gonna make the predator a good guy in any of these stories have him fighting a big kraken thing Put him on a boat, you know, and just say like, okay, I got to fight this guy. How is that going to go? That could be pretty cool. And maybe like Zeus is like, what the fuck is happening? Did you kill my son? And now you're doing his quest and then the predator becomes an immortal? That could be really sick. Just imagine like how cool that could look. Just to pr- just like imagine like the classic Clash of the Titans where we have to fight the Kraken, but it's just a predator cl- clawing its way through it, blowing it up with its guns and grenades and discs and like how sick that would be i would love that more than anything in the world you know you know what else i would love to see i was kind of thinking like oh should i just put the universal monsters on here like do we want predator versus frankenstein and dracula and then i was like no that's a little too stupid you know abed and costello fought them i don't know if we need to have like the predator fight them so i went with this Predator versus the Night of the Living Dead. It's a predator in a world of zombies. It comes down to Earth thinking it's going to be fighting the ultimate predators and hunters of this planet. Instead, it's hit with a plague and all that is left are the corpses, the endless corpses that are coming to find the one thing still built on flesh. Imagine, let's say, four predators come down to the Earth. Can they survive the onslaught of eight billion people trying to get to them as they are the last living things on the planet? That would be freaking sweet. That would be so bloody cool. Just seeing the... the, Because part of the appeal of the Predator is he's got a cool, like, array of weapons. Imagine just getting to see a Predator go ham on mindless corpses, blasting and blowing and destroying everything in its path. No remorse, no care in the world for anything, any form of life. Just a Predator killing a bunch of zombies. You could be... Maybe it's the World War Z zombies. I guess it should just be Predator versus zombies. I went with Night of the Living Dead because I'm like, how cool would it be just to put that like aesthetic in? Like the classic 4-3 aspect ratio, black and white, and it's the Predators, and every time they bleed, the green blood is in color. And you're like, oh, that looks so cool. This pops so vibrantly. I love it. That's what I want to see. That's just what I want to see. It's what I want to experience. Put it in my mouth. Let me yummy, yummy, yummy it. Come on. That would be so cool. I just want that. I want that more than anything. And and look, this one, I had to put it in here solely because it's a great idea. And I, I, I was kind of talking about Feudal Japan too. What if you took the plot of Seven Samurai, but instead of somebody terrorizing the village, it's a bunch of samurai that have to come together to defend this village from a predator. You know, let's go to these feudal eras and just have like the more like, redefined predator as like this young you know headstrong character thinking they can come and attack this primitive species but they don't realize that the men of this period have so much honor that they're willing to band together in a time when they shouldn't and come to fight just imagine the beautiful samurai sword fight that could happen between a predator using its spear and just like a big long sword oh Oh, give me that shit, man. Like, that would just be so cool. And you could do the Old West and Magnificent Seven, this bitch. But I'm like, who wants to see that? Like, guns aren't as fun to see as swords. You could put a predator in there if it's spear, fighting a couple of samurai if it's swords. I am on board for whatever you're going to give me. That is just a really cool idea, a really neat concept. And it's kind of fun. You could also be like Pirates of the Caribbean. Nah, that sucks. I want to be in Fuel Japan. I just want more stuff to be set in Fuel Japan. I know FX has been teasing us with that new Shogun show that's supposedly coming out soon. Just give me it. Just give me it, you know? I want it. And I, like, 
I know another easy one to say is like the Mortal Kombat franchise because Predator has been a character in those games before. I am just like, that's so boring. You know, like we, we know exactly how that would go. But if you put Predator in the Dirty Harry world, how would that go? <laughs> Could you imagine any actually any Clint Eastwood character you put in a, in a move, any Clint Eastwood character that would be so weird to see because Clint is a really tough guy, but he's not that machismo kind of tough that like an Arnold is, you know, where if you just put that kind of character that he plays everywhere in there, you don't buy it. You could see, you know, John Matrix from Commando fighting a predator. You could see the last action hero fighting a predator. You pick a, like Dirty Harry or the Man of No Name or any of those characters, you don't see an Eastwood trope character fighting a predator in that way it just doesn't work there's nothing about that that seems like it would work or be interesting or have any longevity to it but hey could be interesting to see we could get some fun shit out of that could could make her some fun stuff but i, was, I don't know like it's something always content forever that's my new motto and my last one is look people would be like how come not the mcu who gives a shit how come not the dcu who gives a shit that's not fun my last one is just John Wick, and, and I know that's so dumb, but I was just like, well, why would he use guns? Just imagine the choreography we could do with somebody in that Predator suit, you know? How would we do that? How could we see how that works? Actually, I just came up with another last one, which we'll talk about in a second. Just the choreography for that would be so sick, and Prey has some fantastic choreography. Imagine if the whole point of Prey was the choreography, and we're seeing how the Predator is supposed to move and look. That is what I want to see from a John Wick Predator thing. Just those two characters coming together and doing something unbelievably scary and intense and thrilling and unheard of. But I did have one more I do want to bring up. One more I just want to like toss in here because I think it could be fun because we've seen this character with enough prep time. They could probably stop the entire world. Kevin McAllister, let's do Predator Home Alone. A grown up, get Macaulay back in. Have them fight. <laughs> like, wouldn't that be sick? That would be really cute and funny, actually. But, eh, who's to say? All of this is just hearsay. Let's put a Predator on succession. How would that go? <laughs> oh, man. Predator versus HBO. That could be a fun story. What Westworld, but it's Predators. Um, no, nah, that's not really anything. That's pretty simple. So out of everything I kind of just said, here's the ones I think would be really cool to see. Predator versus RoboCop. Predator vs. Planet of the Apes, Predator vs. Mad Max, Predator vs. Seven Samurai, Predator vs. Clash of the Titans, and Predator vs. Night of the Living Dead. Fun concepts, fun characters, interesting stuff to explore. This is going to be a shorter episode because I was supposed to do it last week. You've probably seen my Prey review. I was going to attach the Prey review to this, but you've seen it already. Thumbs up, praise, freaking great. And that can lead us into our recommendations for the week. So my first recommendation for you is to watch Predator, the original from 87, and the Predator, or the Predators, the one of Adrian Brody. That's a pretty good one. And you can watch those and then immediately jump into Prey because Prey is a phenomenal film. So creative, so fantastic, very good. Top Gun Maverick was fantastic if you want to get some more, you know, cruise in your life i think that was really good rogue one for your andor flavor that's always a great place to go and of course night of the living dead is a fantastic film star trek is a great show seven samurai is fantastic i will always have a soft spot for everything planet of the apes but i can't say no to avp there is something special about the comics and the movies for alien versus predator there's stuff to check out if you're interested in seeing more predator content but if you're not Please let me know out of everything I suggested for you, putting that into a Predator versus movie, which one would you like to see the most? And if so, what other character would you like to see in the versus franchise stories on Geek Wave? Got a couple more I think we'll do later on in the series, but who's to say? Could be fun. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.